Hello friends. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this worship service of Harlow United Methodist Church and Oak Grove United Methodist Church. We are so pleased that you have joined us for worship today. This worship service is being recorded for worship on Sunday, June the 21st, 2020. That day is also Father's Day. And so we wish a happy Father's Day to all of you who are celebrating Father's Day, and we pray God's blessings on your families. For those of you who may find this day a difficult day, for whatever reason, we pray that you will find comfort in God's presence in your life, that the Holy Spirit will comfort you and give you peace. We pray that this worship service finds you safe and well and that the Holy Spirit is working in your lives, renewing you and restoring you in faith, hope, and love. In preparation for this worship service, you may want to find in your Bibles Psalm 146 and in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 17 through 20. You may also want to light a candle in your home as a reminder of the presence of Christ with us. And now, let us turn our hearts and minds to the worship of Almighty God. hearts are open, all desires are known, and no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter, <clears throat> Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have being. Put not your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners and upholds the widow and the orphan. But the Lord brings the way of the wicked to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation, praise the Lord. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 17 through 20. In the same way, 
when God desired to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise, that is, to the Hebrew people, the unchangeable character of God's purpose, he guaranteed it by an oath. So that through two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible that God should prove false, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
conversation with several people who have found recent events in our world to be quite troubling. We're facing simultaneous crises in our world and some of us in our lives. We have a crisis of a global pandemic and we have a crisis of race relations in our country. Some of us, including myself, are facing the crises of personal grief and loss. In these conversations, I've heard people express heartbreak and grief, despair and disappointment, and uncertainty about the future. We feel exhausted by the images we see on television and the news that we hear and we read. We feel impatient because we want things to go back to the way they were. And we often feel unsure about how to respond to some of the events going on in the world and even in our own lives. One of my friends put it this way. She said, the heaviness of the world is weighing on me. Now, I believe that it is okay and appropriate to be able to name and express our feelings. It is one way that we begin to heal and to grow. But in times in which we feel personal loss or disappointment and despair, or when we feel the pain of the world, we need to know where to put our trust. We place our trust and hope in God, in the steadfast love of God, and in our salvation through Jesus Christ. Today I want to share with you a symbol of Christian hope. It is the anchor. And this picture was taken of a stained glass window in another church that I served a few years ago. And it shows how the anchor can be a symbol of Christian hope because you can see in this picture that it isn't simply an anchor. It also shows the image of the cross of Jesus Christ where a horizontal line intersects with the vertical line. The white of this portion of the anchor, the white part of the cross, represents Jesus' holiness and divinity. And the gold tips on either side represent his royalty, that he reigns forever. According to one of the books on Christian symbols that I've read, the anchor cross originated during a time of persecution of Christians of the Roman Empire before the time of the Emperor Constantine. During that time of persecution, Christians developed symbols that they used to communicate with each other. And you might have seen other symbols like the symbol of the fish. The symbol of the cross is similar in that when a Roman, a Roman citizen might see the symbol of the anchor, those who were not Christians would only see an anchor, but those who were Christians knew that that symbol represented the hope that we find in our salvation through Jesus Christ. As the writer of the book of Hebrews puts it, the anchor is a symbol of hope, sure and steadfast. The scripture that inspired this symbol of our hope of salvation anchored in Jesus comes from the book of Hebrews, which I just read. The book of Hebrews is really an extended sermon meant to encourage these Christians who were being persecuted because they felt discouraged and they felt defeated and they needed someone to encourage them. It's called the book of Hebrews because of its numerous references to Hebrew people of the past in the Old Testament, people like Abraham and Moses, Jacob and Esau and Isaac. It's also called the book of Hebrews because it uses a lot of Hebrew imagery, uh, Judah, <clears throat> Jewish religious imagery to describe Jesus' work on our behalf. 
The significance of the work of Jesus, his crucifixion and sacrificial death on the cross, is rooted in Jewish religious sacrifices. He is the lamb that was sacrificed for the sin of the world. So those who originally received this letter to the Hebrews are likely Jewish people who had become followers of Jesus Christ. The author of the book of Hebrews is unknown, and it is unknown about the location of these Jewish followers of Jesus Christ, but we do know about the challenges they were experiencing. They faced persecution because of their faith in Jesus. Some had been put in prison because of their faith, others had had their property seized, and some had been publicly tortured. They felt defeated and discouraged and uncertain about their future. It seems they were even considering returning to their Jewish faith. The author of this book of Hebrews encourages them not to give up hope because their hope is in the salvation that they have received through Jesus Christ. Now most of us know what an anchor does for a boat. The anchor of a boat is lowered into the water to keep the boat in place so that it doesn't drift away from its port or dock and sometimes so that the boat doesn't drift away due to high winds or a storm. One of the symbols for the church is a boat. You may remember that in the Gospels we read stories about the disciples being in a boat and tossed about by the storm on the Sea of Galilee. We can compare their experience being tossed about by a storm on the Sea of Galilee to the experiences we have being tossed about by the storms of life. The anchor is meant to be a symbol of security in times of trouble for the church and in times of trouble for individual Christians. Thomas Long is a famous or well-known preacher and teacher of preachers in the United States, and he compares the anchor of a boat to the anchor of our faith in Jesus Christ. He says that our anchor is not submerged in the sea like the anchor of a boat would be. Our anchor has been taken into heaven by Jesus where he has secured it to the throne of God. Jesus, the forerunner on our behalf, took the anchor into heaven and he fastened it securely to the steadfast love and commitment of God. According to Thomas Long, then, we can imagine that there is this rope that is tied to that anchor and it extends from heaven down to earth to us so that faithful Christians can hold on to the hope that we have in our faith in Jesus Christ. Christians can steady themselves by trusting in God's promises and in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. What Christ did on the cross on our behalf is a done deal. What he did, he did once and for all, and it does not need to be. It cannot be undone. Nothing has to be added to it. Nothing can be taken away from it. Christ did the thing that needed to be done. He saved us from sin and death. Our salvation is sure and steadfast. Now these original receivers of the encouraging words in the book of Hebrews felt defeated and encouraged. Their faith didn't seem to be making a difference in their lives. In fact, faith in Jesus Christ was making their lives more difficult. And they were beginning to feel insecure about their faith and wondering if it made any difference. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt or wondered if your faith was making any difference in your life or in the lives of others or in the world? It depends on where we place our hope. 
Do we place our hope on our own ability to just trudge through and make it through troubled times? Do we place our hope on our jobs or our own skills? Do we place our hope in our bank accounts or retirements, in our education, in our family legacy, in government leaders? Earthly treasures can be destroyed. Those of us who live in North Carolina and have weathered hurricanes, we know that very well. Savings accounts and retirement funds can be used up because of emergencies. Jobs can be lost, and whatever we might have learned through our educations or experience can also be deemed inaccessible by any number of diseases that affect our brains. But whatever challenges we experience, whatever we might lose in our lives, cannot affect God's love for us. Our hope is in God. Our hope is in God, the sufficiency of God's grace to sustain us and God's promise to give us hope and a future. Another well-known preacher named Fred Craddock had this to say about hope. He said, like faith, Hope is the primary ingredient of a life healthy and alive to God. We must have hope, he says, to be sure. But on those occasions when we feel no hope, hope still exists. Let me say that again. On the occasions when we feel no hope personally, hope still exists. There is hope beyond hope. Therefore, Christian life is not held hostage to our feelings. Our hope is in the steadfast love of God and in the work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We know that God has done his best for us in Jesus Christ. Our salvation is secure. Knowing that we can do nothing to add to Christ's work of salvation and we can't do anything to take anything away from it gives us hope and confidence so that we can keep going in the midst of disappointment and despair and uncertainty. But hope and security in salvation doesn't mean that we sit back and accept things the way that they are. Our security in our salvation doesn't mean that we sit back and become uninvolved, that we just watch things happen. Hope doesn't mean that we don't take responsibilities as Christians. Jesus has told us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus has told us to take up our cross and follow him. And in the book of John, he gave us an example of washing each other's feet, and he told us to do just as he did. So this hope that we have in Christ gives us the confidence to step out in faith. It means that we can face hard questions about how Christians should respond to certain events and circumstances and respond in whatever way is appropriate and necessary, whether that is prayer or repentance or education or acts of mercy and acts of justice. We can experiment with new ministries, and if we need to make adjustments in those ministries, we can do that knowing that our hope in our salvation is secure. We can Ask God questions in prayer, hard questions. And we can wrestle with God when we get answers we don't like. Because we have the example of Jacob in the Old Testament who wrestled with God and was blessed. We can trust that God will sustain us through a pandemic, but at the same time we can take the responsibility that Jesus has given us to care for others by wearing our masks and washing our hands. Those two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. They are 
both and. We can live with confidence and courage and faithfulness because we know that our hope is securely anchored in heaven by Christ. May we live in such a way that we glorify God in all we do. Amen. to you today with praise and thanksgiving for the beauty of your creation, for the season of summer, for the greenness of the leaves and the grass, for the opportunity to play in the water at the beach and at swimming pools. We thank you, Lord, for your care for us, your steadfast, loving care for us. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for the salvation that we have received in Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in that. Today, Lord, we give thanks for all of those men and maybe even some women who have functioned as fathers in our lives, leading and guiding us, protecting us and teaching us and helping us to navigate the world. We lift up to you, Lord, this day, all those who are grieving the loss of a father and all those who are grieving a loss of any kind. We lift up to you, Lord, those who have troubled relationships with their fathers or those who never knew their fathers at all, and we pray, Lord, that you would give them comfort and strength. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen those who find themselves unwell and unhealthy this day. We especially pray, Lord, for those who have been infected by the COVID virus. We pray, Lord, for their recovery. We also pray, Lord, for all of the medical personnel who are working in our hospitals and medical systems. We pray, Lord, for all of the counselors and psychologists whose jobs have probably uh, increased during this time as well. We pray, Lord, for all our law enforcement and for emergency personnel. And we do also pray, Lord, for all of our sisters and brothers of colors, color who find themselves 
feeling trauma or feeling neglected. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to seek to understand and to listen and to heal our relationships with each other. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be with us in the midst of that, guiding us. We pray, Lord, for all of the leaders of state and local and national governments that you would lead and guide and direct them with your Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord, for our church, for all churches in our community, as we seek to find ways to worship in our sanctuaries together once again in a way that would be safe in a way that would safeguard those who are vulnerable, but also allow them to worship. We pray, Lord, finally, for all those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and who have not been able to put their hope in Him or have not had the opportunity. And we pray, Lord, that you would open a way all these things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And now, may the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the steadfast love of God, and the power and hope of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and all days. Amen.